the, um, the standard assay by which uh, for, is the gold standard for therapeutic treatment is a, an, an assay that detects virus particles, virions, in, in blood or in plasma that's just blood free of cells, um, down to a level of about 50, uh, 50 copies. It's, it's, it's an assay that measures um, uh, RNA in the virus genome, and it's very specific. Mm -hmm. And it's actually, that's actually highly sensitive. I mean, 50 virions mm -hmm. is it's an extraordinarily small amount of virus. But that was um, a research, <coughs> research. And, but that, and that came out of, or originally out of, of course, basic research right. uh, and that's, studies. That's, that's a level that's, they use. That's the standard, that's the standard yeah. assay that if you have a, 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 an HIV test done, that's the, mm -hmm. an assay will be used that has about that level of sensitivity, depending mm -hmm. a little bit on the assay. Um, but for a lot of studies, so, but what happens in a patient who has, um, by today's standards, successfully treated, means that the uh, virus RNA becomes undetectable by that assay, meaning that a, a milliliter of, uh, of plasma, which is uh, quite a small amount, um, has uh, less than 50 copies of, of RNA in it, or less than 25 virions, actually, if you want to be mm -hmm. technical, because they're As opposed to 100,000 as, as opposed to something like 100,000 yeah. um, in a fully, mm -hmm. uh, in a full-blown untreated infection. Mm -hmm. um, so that's, that's pretty good, actually, if you mm -hmm. think about it. That's down by from 100,000 down to 50, that's down by a factor of what, 2,000, I guess it is. And, and logs. They yeah, they yeah right. Yeah. And that's, uh, or uh, um, uh, to over, over three logs, if you like, 10, mm -hmm. 10 to the third. Mm -hmm. And, um, but we found that that 50 level was very unsatisfying. To, to say something is successful because you can't detect it anymore, it doesn't mean it's not there, it just mm -hmm. means that you're, it's, it's telling you, in a sense, more about your, your, the inability of your assay to detect something than, than about what's going on. Mm -hmm. And we suspected that there might be something very interesting going on if you could look at, uh, uh, with much greater sensitivity. So mm -hmm. we, we developed an assay that can see down to uh, about 100 fold less than that or, or better. Mm -hmm. So we can see down to um, really one copy. Mm -hmm. Now, you can't get any more sensitive than that. The assay is infinitely sensitive in a way because you can't have less than one copy. You either have one, you either have a copy or you don't. You can't have less than one, okay? And so, it's like a pregnancy test that measures, you know, being half pregnant or something. <laughs> right. um, and so, and we can see that in um, several milliliters of blood, not just one, and so we can see down to, oh, three tenths or two tenths of, of, of a copy of per milliliter altogether, which is another, can be as much as 100 fold down from the, uh, mm -hmm. Uh, from the 50 fold, 50 copies of the standard assay. And when we started to look at patients um, using that assay, and there's nothing, the assay was not sort of a major new dimension, it was simply a matter of carefully refining all of the parameters that went into doing certain, what had already been well developed analyses and just really uh, doing it in a very, very careful, detailed way, going over all of the details and mm -hmm. just making it better and better a little bit at a time. And, um, but when we started to look at patients who now by standard assays were undetectable or whose virus was undetectable, actually the, the undetectable patient always amuses me. That's mm -hmm. the guy that you can't see when he walks in the door, I guess, but mm -hmm. the, the, uh, the patient with undetectable right. viremia. Um, <coughs> we, um, uh, we found that 80% of those patients, in fact, did have detectable virus mm -hmm. um, by our test, and that, that averaged um, somewhere between two and three copies per milliliter, so down a factor of 15 to 25 um, from, mm -hmm. what the, uh, from what the standard had been. And so we thought this might be a better way, actually, to, to, to do routine viral loads. Maybe this, maybe this should mm -hmm. be adopted for for viral load measurement, at least in the at least in the context of clinical trials, it might using this assay. Uh, our thinking was it might be a lot better. Mm -hmm. Might be able to find out more effectively whether a drug was working well or not being able, by being able to look this this much further mm -hmm. down. Mm -hmm. um, that turned out not to be true, mm -hmm. uh, to our, our, our big surprise. So we we did a collaborative study with with Abbott Labs, who had had a lot of banked specimens from their trial of Calitra. And to make a long story short, what we found was that. Um, it didn't matter if the drug was more or less effective. Uh, patients had exactly the same amount of, of, of virus. Mm. Um, so there was no, uh, there's no effect on the type of drug or the potency or the effective effectiveness of the drugs that were used mm -hmm. in their ability to reduce the level of mm -hmm. viremia down to these low levels. Mm -hmm. And 
and from that we drew the tentative conclusion that um, that the virus that you were seeing in these patients was not due to um, ongoing replication of virus because if it was it, due to ongoing replication, it was replication of virus. It was escape, some, some way escaping mm -hmm. the drugs you were given. But if you mm -hmm. see exactly the same thing with different drugs, it's very unlikely that different drugs would have exactly the same effect on, mm -hmm. this, on this escape. And so uh, we came to the conclusion that these, this virus was coming from cells that were, or the tentative conclusion that this virus was coming from cells that were mm -hmm. infected before therapy started, not from ongoing replication. And just like not being somewhere other evacuated as we thought from the system, they're just laying there. These are, right, these are likely to be cells that are infected, what we call latently infected. Mm -hmm. they, have, uh, they have viral DNA, HIV replicates by making the proviral DNA, mm -hmm. which then gets integrated. If the cell doesn't do anything, it doesn't divide or it doesn't express HIV, then that can sit for years mm -hmm. and years and years, and that seems to be what's happening. And then every once in a while, mm -hmm. these cells uh, come back, start to be activated to make HIV, mm -hmm. put a little burst of virus out in the, into the plasma. maybe. Mm -hmm. As much in, f in, in another study as seven years after the start of therapy, we can still see these, uh, th this little bit of virus coming out. And if you stop therapy, it's not no big surprise then that this virus comes right back up again. So, th but there must be a level where that we've kind of learned, at least from this to that, say maybe 25 to 75 or 100 copies, that seems within that area you would have the likelihood of staying suppressed That's because right. it seems to be that the 50 works. It turns out, 50, turns out that 50 or it's about a, right. little, a little more than 50 is probably a pretty good cutoff. Yeah. And just by chance, of course, that's where yeah. the assay yeah. happens to land. Yeah. Um, but it's probably, I would guess, if I had to guess somewhere around 100 would be the, 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 the cutoff yeah. be before which, a, after which you're beginning to see not this kind of latent virus, but actually some actual virus replication, replication yeah. which could then ultimately lead to failure by acquisition mm -hmm. of new resistance mm -hmm. mutations and so on. You know, we see so many different, at the conferences, there's like a, a big buzz around, I guess, about four years ago, maybe about the same time as you brought that particular subject up, uh, on a RNAi and mm -hmm. a few others, and it seems it seems a buzz of the conference. It, it was a buzz. And, and I, I don't know, I, sometimes we don't know whether this really has moved along sufficiently or it's just maybe kind of laying there, kind I, of doing I, I don't think a great deal, and there, there are two issues with R RNAi. One, mm -hmm. one is whether RNAi's um, play any nat value in natural infection. Is there an RNAi infect? Does HIV make an RNAi that, mm -hmm. that then affects cell function? Or conversely, does the cell make an RNAi mm -hmm. that might affect Cart HIV? Horse, yeah. um, so that's, that's one issue. And then the other issue is, is um, can RNAi be developed to, um, to aid in therapy, yeah. either by uh, by directly affecting HIV, which I would probably not guess would be the most useful um, uh, application of that, but uh, also by affecting the expression of cellular genes mm -hmm. in RNAi against CCR5, when I might imagine mm -hmm. um, would be fair, could be fairly effective. And mm -hmm. the big issue there, and would stall all of that kind of research, is being is the gene therapy issue, is being able to get. Um, genes, uh, I I being able to get these molecules into cells or being able to get genes that express it's, it's these the molecules vector, into I guess, cells getting efficiently. Yeah, it's the if we could do that, the there are yeah. lots and lots of strategies that, that have been yeah. worked on up over the years um, yeah. that could be uh, easily tried. But the, the, there's, the, there's this huge stumbling block in all of that kind of, of, yeah. of approach of nucleic acid-based therapeutic mm -hmm. approach or mm -hmm. gene-based therapeutic approach mm -hmm. to, of, of getting the, the gene into the right target cell you mm -hmm. wanted in all of the CD4 cells. Mm -hmm. um, and therefore, you want it. You have to have it in a precursor to the CD4 cell, so mm -hmm. that as they're made, they they express this. Nobody's nobody's mm -hmm. yet figured out an efficient way to do this. Mm -hmm.